to one occasion here in the community, uh, we pr play different uh, games which are supposed to create unity and bonding. One of them is Mafia. Uh, mafia has the potential to create unity and bonding and has the, ten the potential to divide the community irreparably. So Mafia, if you've ever played it, or if you've never played it, uh, involves a group of people sitting around with their, you put your heads down and eyes closed, and there are two people nominated as Mafia, one nominated as a doctor, one nominated as various de a detective, and um, the Mafia then have to choose who they wish to, you know, finish. And uh, then we have to, you try and guess who the Mafia is. So the, the Mafia know who each other are. Apart from that, no one knows who's who. So basically, you have to lie. Uh, during the game, if you're accused of being a Mafia, you have to say, no, of course I'm not. <laughs> of course that's not me. And then everyone has to like vote who's a Mafia to remove them. OK. But what's just really awful is some people are shockingly good at lying. And it's, it's, I'm not sure if that's much of a compliment now, but like they can look at you square in the eyes and say, it's not me when it clearly when it clearly was like or when, it, when you discover later that, that it actually was but they can oh no ab no absolutely not never i would never i would never do i would never have killed off katie never no of course not we're best buds <laughs> right and all the time there they are lurking in the darkness with their dagger you know so <coughs> so it's it's, a, it's it's a horrible thing when we um primary school i think it was a, it was a lot more common for us uh, to, to, to make promises, to promise, you know what I mean? I, I swear, I swear to God, I swear, you know, it was kind of a common thing. I'm not sure if that's, if that's still the case, but like if you wanted to talk with your friends and you wanted to kind of emphasize something or you wanted to, 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 to drive your point home, oh, I swear to God, that's how it happened. Like, you know, we kind of make, as we get older, I think we, we make those kind of promises a little less. But then we take, take on more serious promises occasions where what you say is very, very important, like when you enter religious life, when you enter priesthood, when you enter marriage, and you promise fidelity, you promise poverty, obedience, chastity, uh, you promise fidelity, uh, you promise you promise to be faithful until death separates you. We make promises. People make promises. We, we make them all the time. Uh, when God makes a promise, that's a different level altogether. When we make promises, there's, there's always a risk that, that, we won't, that we won't live it, that we will fall short. We can promise fidelity and, and end up being unfaithful. We can promise poverty and end up getting attached to things. We can promise, who knows? To, to be honest, every time we go to confession, we promise not to sin again. And we do. So our, our promise, we should. It's good for us to make promises. Our promises, like even in, 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 in the form of a contract, your signature, your signature represents your, your personhood, right? I sign my name to this means what I have stated here, I stand by. And that's, it's, it's kind of as much as we can do for a legal contract, you know, a signature. Back in the day with the, with the Jews, when they would sign a, a contract with God, which, which is a, what was called a covenant, when they would make a covenant with God, you would get an animal, maybe a a bull, and you would split it in half. And then you would take maybe various, various animals, but the, the, idea was, the idea was always the same. You split them in half, and then you walk through the divided animal with the other person with whom you signed the contract, covenant. And the idea was, if I break this covenant, may what has happened to these animals happen to me. So it was a very visible way of of writing a contract, if you will, of entering into a covenant. If I fall short of my side of the bargain, may this happen to me. When God makes promises, they are, they are, <laughs> these are divine words. These are divine, like words that God has spoken. So he doesn't need to, 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 in any way to kind of prove that he will be faithful. He doesn't need to be kind of threatened with prison or threatened with death lest he fall short of his side of the bargain because he never will. He never will. Whatever he says, whatever he promises will happen. Whatever he says is true. So when we read, it's like there's a list of, of promises uh, given to us through the prophet, Ize uh, prophet Ezekiel today. So he's, but even his promises, his promises are, are actually for us, right? So he's telling us about his people, 
So that's, today that's us. That's us. They will no longer defile themselves with, with their idols and their filthy practices and all their sins. So he's telling us a time will come when you're not going to sin anymore. Now we know where that is. It's not, it's not this side of eternity. Well, and he maybe is there already for the rest of us. <laughs> Most are going to have to wait for heaven, I think, before, before we stop sinning. I shall rescue them from all their betrayals that they have been guilty of. I shall cleanse them. This is like a foretaste of, of or a, a promise of, of, of the cross to come. So the grace available to us on the cross. We will be cleansed. And then I just, I'd love this line. And I, they shall be my people and I will be their God. And that's for all eternity. So like this, this, but this is a divine promise. There will be one shepherd over all. They will follow my observances. They will respect my laws and practice them. They will live in the land I gave to my servant Jacob. Not just a mere land here on earth. We will live in heaven. Again, a divine promise. If, if we follow what the Lord says, we will live in heaven. They and their children's children and their children's children forever. I shall make a covenant of peace with them, an eternal covenant. I shall resettle them and increase them. I shall settle my sanctuary among them forever. Yes, we will live with God. We will live with him in heaven. More than kind of settling his sanctuary. like He, he will dwell among us. We will dwell in him. We will share his nature. It's, it's just so beautiful. And then he says it again. I will be their God. They shall be my people. And the nations will learn that I am the Lord, the sanctifier of Israel, and my sanctuary is with them forever. A divine promise. A list of divine promises. When you think these aren't, you know, these promises, it's like, it's like I want to give you, I promise, I want to give you these things. Do you know, like in a normal contract, um, it's the, the half be two sides. I give you the money, you give me the, the, the product, whatever it is. You know, I give you the money, you give me the car. Uh, that's how we that's how we do things. I give you we go to the bank. I give you a guarantee that I will pay back a certain rate every month. You give me the lump sum. I can buy the house. Okay. So there's a what, what can we possibly give God? So even even if like, our covenants, if you will, that we enter into with God or the, the, the biblical covenants, what does what, what can we actually give God? What, what can we give him that He doesn't have? What does He want from us? Well, He actually just wants us to accept him for who he is he just wants us to recognize that he is God and to love him accordingly that's it no offering I bring him no building I build no amount of theology I study really matters unless unless he has my heart so it's in a way bless us it's just in a way it's just so simple why can't we get this into our heads or more into our hearts. That he just wants your love. He just wants your heart. And what he gives you in return is eternity. It's, it's like it's completely unfair. It's completely undeserved. It's complete just divine generosity. We give him our limited time. He gives us eternity. We give him our distracted prayers. He gives us the grace one for us on the cross. We give him bits of bread and wine. He gives us his own body, blood, soul, and divinity. That's God. That's how he is. So if he promises that he wants to be our God, that he will be our God and we will be his people and he will establish a sanctuary there among us, well then that's, that's it. That's true. The question is, will I let God be God in me? Will I, let, will I let God be God in my life? Will I let God guide me? Will I let God use me? So we ask the Lord today for that readiness to be instruments of the Lord in everything and to carry his, his consolation, to carry these promises with us wherever we go, also to those that we meet, that this truth might reside firmly in our hearts that God wants to be the God of, of everyone we meet he wants everyone to, to live with him for all eternity in heaven if we live in that confidence in that truth, in that trust why wouldn't we want to share it our gospel 
ends on a kind of a biblical cliffhanger, if you will. We've been hearing for the last couple of days how Jesus has been working miracles and now a growing number of people are seeking to kill him. So he goes off into a desert to be with his disciples there and people are looking out for him in Jerusalem saying to one another as they sit about in the temple, what do you think? Will he come to the festival or not? Question mark. And then that's it. Tomorrow now is Palm Sunday. Holy Week begins. It's even kind of somewhat poignant that at the end of this page there's a big empty page. Will he come to the, will he come to the, the, the Passover or not? Empty page. It's just left there because it's, it's about to happen. All that the Lord had planned, all that had been prophesied, all in the, that, that had been put together in, 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 in this divine intellect is now going to be made visible, take flesh. It's all going to happen. And we are just the, 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 the beneficiaries of this. We did nothing to earn any of this. What a gift. What a gift to have God as our Lord. What a gift to be able to call Jesus our brother and God our father. So we ask the Lord today to, to open our hearts now to a, a profound celebration of, of this Holy Week. That we might discover truly who he is, the depth of his love for us. And that we might see realized in our lives his promises. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining us on YouTube or on Paving the Way Home or on Spotify, wherever you've listened to these homilies. Thank you so much for being part of our mission and for continuing to support our mission. It was a great gift that during lockdown uh, we could branch out or broaden uh, our, our outreach so much uh, through technology. So it was, that's been a wonderful privilege and honour. Uh, I'd ask two things, if I may. <clears throat> One that we'd really appreciate your prayers for our mission. So we have our young people here with us this year. And then there are also, there's a youth ministry, family ministry, and hopefully in the near future, men's ministry, which we hope to engage in. So we'll ask for your prayers for uh, all of those outreaches. And if you feel that the Lord is calling you to support us also financially, uh, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, running a place like this is, is not cheap, and uh, we do need uh, benefactors' help to, to keep the show on the road and to keep our doors open and to keep this place of formation uh, alive for uh, the young people that come to us. We have opened our applications for next year as well. So if you know anybody who might like to apply, they can do so through our website, holyfamilymission.ie. And also, if you'd like to make any donations, you can do so through our website, holyfamilymission.ie, or send us an email if you'd like to uh, arrange some other form of donation. But we would be greatly, greatly appreciative of any support that you can give us uh, through your prayer and through your financial support. All right. So God bless, and we're praying for you here in Holy Family.